Dear students, in the last module, we have come up with the solutions of maintaining the integrity in DPMS. And we discussed that there are commit and rollback protocol which can be used to maintain the integrity of the DBMS. So let's talk about this thing in a little bit more detail. So such kind of things we need when a single statement or transaction have multiple steps. So for example, the transfer of fund from one bank account to another, which we discussed in the last module, that you have decremented from this account. However, you have not incremented the account of the second person. So in between your databases shut down, there is a uh, electricity disconnection or something like that. So how we can make sure that that transaction has been done? Because in real life, we say that transfer this amount from this account to another account. And that kind of transaction or statement have multiple statements when they are translated into the machine code because one machine instruction, there is no one machine instruction that can tell that, okay, get this amount and put it into the other's account. So you, uh, if you realize or if you remember uh, our previous modules when we were talking about the machine instructions, so uh, we will have multiple instructions for this. For example, reading account from one place and then putting that account to another place. So fetch decode of the instruction and then execution of the instruction and then going into the second part of transferring into the second account. Similarly, the cancellation of an airline reservation. So if you have already booked your flight, so the cancellation again could be translated into multiple statements and one can be done at one time. So how will you make sure that all of those three, four instructions, which are making only one transaction have completely been executed? So this is the basically role of commit and rollback protocol, which we, we, which we are discussing. And then the registration of a student in the university course. So let's see the example in little bit more detail. So for example, here is an account of one person which has, for example, the balance of 1000. And here is another account which has balance of 500. So my instruction is that I want to transfer 200 from first account or let's name it account A into account B. So this means the total amount would be 800 in account A and 700 in account B. So my first instruction would be read from account A, so which is 1000. That has been done in millisecond, for example, or in one go or in one transaction or in one machine cycle. And then when you have read, then you need to take that amount into the registers somewhere into the CPU. So this amount is going over there. So that is a second step. And then here is a signal of decrement, which will decrement 200 from this 1000. And then we'll again store it over here and we'll add into this account. So this account would need to again bring into the register. So this 500 will be put into another register here. And then whatever you have decremented from the other account will be put into this register and then this will be saved into back into this register. So this means there are many, many statements which need to be executed all of this transaction and which cannot be completed in one cycle. So how our database, our DBMS, database management system will take care that all of these things have been done. So this means 1000 has been decremented and now the value of 1000 is 800 and the 500 has been incremented by 200 and the value of account B is 700. So how will they manage and take care of it? 
So we handle such situation by maintaining a log. So there is a log file which has all of the instructions which have been executed by the DBMS. So for example, it is saying it is recording that I have read account A. So that has been placed in the register. Then I have decremented that has been placed in the log file. Then I have stored that thing into back into that particular place. So this has been maintained in the log. So all of the log is over there. And when all of the instructions have been completed, so this log will tell you that we have completed the transaction. So before a transaction alters the database, log file would be updated. So what would be the commit point? So the point at which all the steps in the transaction have been recorded in the log is called commit point. So if you have reached to the commit point, this means all of the instructions have been completed. So there is another phenomena known as rollback. So if problem should arise before a transaction has reached its commit point. So for example, account A has been decremented by 200, but account B was not incremented by 200. So this means in the uh, log file, there is no commit point. So at that place, you can perform the rollback. So rollback, we mean that execute those instructions in the reverse order and in a reverse routine. So for example, if you have decremented 200 from account A, so now add those 200 into account A and then uh, make that database in proper shape and then again perform the instruction from start so that the complete instruction or transaction can be completed. So uh, rollback has many applications that we have discussed that a transaction might be terminated before it has completed all of its steps because of an attempt to access privileged information. So in that case, you can use rollback. Can be used in a deadlock in which competing transactions file uh, find themselves waiting for data being used by others. So in that situation, you can perform the rollback. And then there is another phenomenon known as cascading rollback, which means suppose a transaction being rolled back have updated an account. So it has updated the account and that account has been used by another instruction because you know that multiple instructions are being processed and multiple applications are using the CPU, which we have discussed. So this means that if application A has partially executed one transaction and updated the account and application B has used that account. So this means that all of the instructions need to be rolled back. So that is called cascading rollback. So let's summarize today's module. We have learned that how the database integrity can be maintained using the commit and rollback and what is cascading rollback.